Control Surface Studio 3 is here and it's packed with amazing new features, all designed to make building MIDI scripts for Ableton Live quicker and simpler than ever before. Here are just some of the highlights from this huge new release. The new global mode can be set in the modes tab. The global mode is a special mode which is always active in your script. Mappings added to this mode will always be active, regardless of which other mode is currently active. The currently active mode can be any other non-global mode in your script. When a script is initialized in Ableton Live, both the global mode and the first non-global mode in the list will be automatically activated. The currently active mode can be changed at any time in Ableton from your MIDI controller by using a mode selector mapping type or a reaction. For each mapping, all of the tags in the tags column are now clickable buttons. When clicked, they are automatically added to the search filter, which instantly filters the mapping table by this tag. Tags visually highlight green if they appear in the search filter. There's also a new auto tag setting which adds the following clickable tags to each mapping. The selected input, the selected mode, and the mapping type. Auto tags can be turned on and off in the app settings menu. And there's also an add tags button, which when clicked opens the mapping settings form. And in here, you can add your own tags specifically for your mapping. Each mapping can now be enabled or disabled by clicking the eye icon. When a mapping is disabled, it is visually dimmed. Disabled mappings will not be included in the generated MIDI remote script. There's also a bulk enable or disable option available at the top of the mappings table. Use it to enable or disable all checked mappings in the table. You can now select a mappings controller input and mode directly in the mappings table. Each of these menus has a search filter, so you can quickly find the controller input or mode that you want. And what you enter into the search is remembered across all menus of that type. And this is the same in the mapping settings form too. When you hover over an input menu, the corresponding controller input in the controller template now highlights. And here's a workflow speed hack when you need to assign inputs to multiple mappings. Open a controller input menu and then select your controller input. This selects the menu and then using the up and down arrow keys, you can go through all of the controller inputs on the controller template and you can visually see which one's being selected in the controller template. And to make this even quicker, you can import a keyword to filter the menu. And then you can just 
go through those filtered options. You can now add multiple keywords separated by commas to the search filter and they will be individually filtered. In conjunction with this, there's a new match all or any button. If all is selected, only mappings which match all of the comma separated keywords in the search filter will display in the table. If any is selected, mappings which match any of the comma separated keywords will display in the table. And you can remove all keywords from the search filter with the new clear button. Enabled and disable mappings can be filtered for by using this button. This button adds the following keywords to the search filter. To show only enable mappings, is enabled is added. To show only disabled mappings, is disabled is added. And to show all mappings, regardless of their state, both are removed. In the mapping settings form, each panel is now expanded by default. You can now expand and collapse each panel individually. And you can expand or collapse all panels using a single button. The state of each panel is remembered across all mappings. Meaning, when you open the next form, the expanded collapse state of each panel is still remembered. Track and device panels have a new checkbox, which switches between UI and modifier menu views. You can use modifiers to set the entire device or track location code. When in UI view, the code which the UI will generate is displayed at the bottom of the panel. Copy and tweak this code when saving to a modifier in a reaction. The code automatically updates as you change the settings in the UI menu. And then you can copy that and drop it into your reaction. Controller inputs now have their own LED feedback section where you can define separate MIDI data specifically for sending LED feedback to. Some MIDI controllers such as the Allen and Heath K2 use different MIDI data for feedback than what the input uses. So this is an ideal solution for it. This works with all mapping types, including session boxes and reactions. Buttons, pads and keys now have a new option called between in the MIDI velocity section. You can use it to set a range of velocity values which should be considered as on or off. For example, you could set on to be between 67 and 127, and then you could have off to be between 0 and 66. 
There's also the equal to option, which is used for setting a specific value. Buttons, pads, and keys now have the following default settings. On, if the velocity value is between one and one, two, seven, and off if the velocity value is equal to zero. These options are also available for increment and decrement settings in the Import Control Override section. Some MIDI controllers which use relative input types, such as endless encoders, are configured to send various velocity values based on how fast they are turned. To allow for this, relative inputs can now have multiple groups of left, right, and number of steps. And if you want to input a large amount of velocity values for the same number of steps, you can set a range of values rather than needing to input each individual velocity value. To do this, you can put a dash between two numbers. For example, we could have 65 to 84 for left, and then 85 to 100 for right, and for the number of steps, could be 100. We have added a new mapping type called selected parameter. With this in your script, you can click any parameter in your Ableton session and have instant control of it with your chosen controller input. It's simple to set up, but very powerful. The reactions forms have been tweaked in a variety of ways. Each menu in the reactions forms now has a search filter. And that's the same for conditions and actions. This makes it super quick to be able to find the reaction menu item that you're looking for. Whenever you open one of these menus, the search filter is automatically selected so you can immediately start typing. And there's a clear text button to the right which appears after you've entered some text. The reactions forms now have a more condensed layout in order to maximize screen real estate. The spacing of each reaction form element has been reduced this enables you to see more data at any one time. To help you focus on specific parts of a reaction, we have added collapse and expand controls to each piece of a reaction. So you can completely close each reaction. When individual listeners, conditions and actions are collapsed, the selected menu name or custom code is displayed. So if I go in here, you can see that the action selection is displayed here. And if I expand it, there's the menu item there. And if I was to switch this to custom code and close it, the custom code is displayed. Action block notes are displayed when a block is collapsed. So you can add your notes in here. And then you can just edit the note by clicking this button or you can just click on the text area 
and also we have a nicer custom code editor so as you can see here you can now tab and input code and also the height of the editor automatically snaps to the height of your code Thanks for watching this highlights video of the new Control Surface Studio 3 release. There's plenty more updates included, so click the website link in the video description to see all of the details.